control your computer at home with your iOS devices. Plus, I'll show you an app to give you courage. And Steppy Pants. <laughs> it's time for iOS today. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. iOS Today is brought to you by Calm, the number one app to help you meditate, sleep, and relax. Start 2019 off right with Calm. For a limited time, get 25% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash iOS Today. And by Atlassian. Atlassian software powers a full spectrum of collaboration between IT teams and the rest of your organization. Visit Atlassian.com slash IT to see what IT can be by giving their products a try for free. And a reminder, we're still doing our survey. We do it once a year. We need to know more about you, and it really helps us. We're not collecting individual information, but we'd like to know a little bit about our audience. If you'd like to participate, it's completely voluntary. But pay a visit to twit.to slash survey19, and uh, we really appreciate it. Now on with the show. Da, 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 da. Hello, everybody. Welcome to iOS Today. I am Leo Laporte. And I am Megan Maroney. And this is a show where we talk about iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches, and Apple TVs. It's like yeah. YMCA. <laughs> iPhones, iPads, Apple Watches, and Apple TVs. Everybody do the dance. The <laughs> yes. iOS Today dance. Hello, Megan. Hello, Leo. It's good to see you. I'm it's glad to see you back with your iPad. Yes. Uh, I'm back with my iPad, but I'm not back with my... I'm separated oh, separately no. from my Apple Watch. Oh, no. Now I'm, what? You know we have a new show, Hands on Tech, uh, where we review products, and I'm reviewing uh, uh, this new Garmin, Vivo Active oh. 3 Music. Oh, and, that's cool. Uh, You're so, pretty active. Does it work well with iOS? It works pretty well with iOS, right. yeah. Yeah, um, you'll you'll have to wait and I see. I was wondering why I don't see any notifications. Oh, Megan just completed a three-minute yoga workout. <laughs> you thought I died, didn't but you? But see, look, Lisa just finished a workout. Oh, good. Give her a little congratulations. Oh, I, li I like to do that now. I got to yeah. do that more. Yeah. Did I did, I, did I do enough with you? She did I indoor did. cycling. Oh, good. For like no time at all, but I'm going to give her, I'm going to give her a reply. <laughs> This is really the bad thing. You really know how to hit the pedals. Does that sound good? Yeah, say that. Or yes. mic drop or don't hurt yourself. I'm going to do don't hurt yourself. She has yet to figure out why she's getting these <laughs> strange, cryptic text messages yeah. on her watch. It um, is funny because they come at different times of the day and you have no idea. And it's just like, it's, oh, in the me And iMessages is associated though, right? It has yeah. your workout and then it's right. underneath it. Yeah. But she's still puzzled by my... Well, if, yeah, and if you're just getting it on your Apple Watch, it just says, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yesterday I did a shameful, shameful thing. Oh, goodness. Are we, we're talking about a private shame? Yeah, on private today, shame. Today? I, w I uh, got on the treadmill before bed. I was in my slippers and jammies and walked two miles for 40 minutes. I walked on the treadmill trying desperately to hatch, to hatch an egg. Oh, a Pokemon. I thought you were trying to complete your rings. No, that would have been a good reason. No, I was trying to hatch an egg in Pokemon Go. And did you? No, that was really the frustrating thing. So I do all that. I'm all sweaty. I get back in bed. Because, you know, you have to do it before midnight. <laughs> I got back in bed, and then I and I said, now, Lisa, right, this health app is going to connect. I got credit in my health app. It's going to connect to Pokemon Go, and the egg is going to hatch. She said, yeah. It didn't. Nothing. It's sad. Nothing. Today, we're going to talk about how to control your computers with your iPads and your iPhones, and vice versa. This is actually a show about magic. Yeah, it really is. Well, and this was such a bigger topic than I thought. Like remote, we didn't There's even really know what to call it. it. Is it remote PC? Is it... Because it's kind of remote access, but it's... Yeah. But now some of the things we're going to sh show you are really limited to your home network. Mm -hmm. So, well, I'll show... You want me to show you one yeah, right you now? Start. I'll start with this. But by the way, I now keep in the box because I lost it. It's so tiny. Um, this is something that uh, Jason uh, Snell taught me about called the Luna Display. And I think it was a Kickstarter... So this is one problem with it. It's this little tiny McNubbin. 
It's got a USB-C connector, although you can get them with a Type A connector as well. I bought the USB-C because I have more modern uh, Macs. Now, here's this weird thing I'm going to do here. First of all, I'm going to connect this to my Macintosh. So it says plug. I you put the Luna app on both your iPad and your Macintosh. I'm going to put this on in my Macintosh. Okay. And then I'm going to run the Luna app. Okay, open the Luna Display app on your iPad. So I'm going to launch the Luna Display app on my iPad. And in a moment, we're on the same, you have to be on the same Wi-Fi network. I now see, this is my Mac, right? I can open the Finder. What's really strange is I can use Touch on my Mac, which is going to really screw me up, right? Yeah. Um, and then uh, you notice it's a different desktop because it's the extended desktop. So uh, I, you can choose where your Mac and iPads are. So the in this case, I'm going to have the Mac on the right and the iPad on the left. You can customize that with various. Oh, I, see, I already started touching my Mac mm -hmm. screen, and it was it only took seconds. Um, and then you have Retina resolution, which I've enabled. If you have a more modern uh, Mac, that's really a nice thing. Because the Retina resolution, my iPad, I mean, is a nice thing because you get the, more, the Retina resolution is is really beautiful, and I can open apps. I, this is this is my Mac that's sitting right next to me, but I'm doing it on my iPad. They have a wired version, but the here's the the thing that's interesting about this. I can, and this is how Jason Snell uses it. He keeps his Luna plugged into his um, Mac Mini uh, in his office, mm. and then now he basically has access to that Mac Mini anywhere in the house because you're on the same Wi-Fi. So anywhere in the house, he can access the Mac Mini. I'm using the uh, pencil because... And then you see here the, the two screens. And uh, he can access that Mac Mini so I could change the desktop picture on this screen, anything I want. Actually, I want to change it to my the dynamic desktop because I really like that on oh, the yeah. Mojave. Uh, and then... Um, he, uh, let's see, what can I say? Uh, he's basically could sit in the living room watching TV and have access to his Macintosh. So he can run any program, he can access it. Now, it's not ideal uh, without a trackpad. Mm -hmm. So what he also does, and you can do this with a Type-C connector, I think. Can you? Maybe, how does he do a mouse? I don't know. Can you connect it? Wireless mouse? Actually, I think you don't. I don't think you can connect a mouse. So what you'll need is you'll, you'll you can't use a mouse, basically. So you just have to, you just have to, you know, because I was trying to, I was pressing command uh, space to open up uh, Spotlight on my Mac, but unfortunately it opens up Spotlight on the iPad. So there is some confusion between iPad commands. I'm going to have to play with this a little bit more to get more used to it. This says it has full it support for external keyboards, mice, and Apple Pencil. Oh, good. Okay. So it does. Okay. Yeah. So uh, if I connect a, a, a USB-C mouse to my iPad, then I'll be able to use it. That's, that makes sense. It, but yeah, because that's kind of, it seemed to me that I remember that's how Jason used it. I wish they sold iPad keyboards with, with uh, trackpads, though. Mm -hmm. That's I what I with, liked about the Pixel. Yeah, without a trackpad, I, I don't have any easy way to access, you know, mousing around with this thing. I have ordered, and it should come pretty soon, um, that new bridge keyboard case for the iPad. We'll be showing that as soon as that arrives. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, this is kind of neat. So it's not fr it's not free. It's not. In fact, it's kind of pricey. I don't remember what. Seventy nine ninety nine. Yeah. So you have to. You're buying hardware. Um, but I love the idea of the reason the hardware makes sense is you would leave this running on a Mac Mini, but you wouldn't even have to connect the Mac Mini to a keyboard, mouse, and monitor after mm -hmm. you set it up, and just leave it running on that. And then anywhere in the house you're watching TV or, you know, cooking or whatever, you not only have access to your iPad. This works really nicely on a 12.9-inch on a iPad Pro, by the way, as you can see, because the screen size are mm -hmm. fairly close together. Um, I'm, I guess the easiest way without a mouse to launch uh, something would be to uh, just uh, use Spotlight. So let me launch Pages. And uh, there we go. And I'm going to create a new document. So I'm running pages. Now, of course, this isn't really doing anything because I can run pages right. on my iPad anyway. So I should run something that you can only run on a, on a Mac. But you get the idea. And it's and you've also, this is the reason I ran pages. This is a fairly uh, uh, complicated um, 
document and you can see it loaded fast it, i can edit it pretty quickly it, it is it is it is fairly snappy so this uses wi-fi you have to be on the same wi-fi network and the idea is you plug this into your mac and you can then control your mac remote access within the network on your ipad luna display there you go so, it, it was a kickstarter i think yeah it was a kickstarter yeah. but now it's available Yep. Um, yeah, and you can use it as a second screen as well. That's what I think a, a lot of people will do is that I'm going to show you a set, another way to do a second screen that I like a little bit better. Okay. After you show me. All right. Well, so I am not a gamer, but like you said, you can run pages on your iPad. You can, you know, you can keep all your documents in the cloud and all that stuff. So there's very little that you can't do. But as you know, there's not a lot of great games on the iPad that uh, you might have on your PC. There will be when uh, when Diablo comes out. There, there or on, uh, World be. of Warcraft. What is it? What are we waiting for? Something from Blizzard. Um, I think so it's Diablo. Yeah, Diablo. Anthony, you know, who's a producer of our yeah. new show. Did I mention we had a new show? <laughs> we have a new show. It's called Hands on it's Tech. hot. Um, he is a big gamer. And he, uh, when I said we were remoting, and his first th thought was to tell us how he actually plays video games at his desk all day on his iPhone. <laughs> Instead what? of working. Wait a minute, uh, what? Connecting. So he has two ways. So <laughs> one one thing that he subscribes to is called Shadow. And this is a high-performance uh, gaming PC in the cloud. Oh, so you could use your iPhone, but it does, or, you, or use any device. It doesn't have to be a super smart device. No, you can use, yeah, you can use uh, an Android device. Because all the work is being done in the, on the servers. Right. Yeah. And so they just came out with an iOS app. The Mac app is much better. So if you have a Mac and you want, you don't want to buy a gaming PC, but you want to use your Mac, it works much better on the Mac. But I'm going to show you the iOS app. Here's my gaming PC. If I wanted to um, <laughs> close that out, here, here's my desktop. Oh, so I could do wow. I could. That's um, really wild. So it's browser. a Windows 10 machine. Yes. Um, I could. Uh, I could <laughs> oh, open this a YouTube. Is weird. Yes. Oh um, my god, it's or, pretty snappy. I gotta I, say. Yeah, it, yeah. It was slow because I was on the wrong. But it doesn't have keyboard support, which is sad. But like, well, you don't need it for a game. No. Launch um, a game. Okay. So let's play some Apex Legends. Which oh, is you are the you big, are with it. You the are big with the game, kids. Which you Look how fast play. this is loading. You can't now play. the key on this, by the way, is it's not loading locally. Uh, there's a little bit loading locally, but mm -hmm. mostly what's loading is on the server. Mm -hmm. You just are connected to the server. So the server's running the game. And so that's why this could be potentially, if you have enough bandwidth and you have a snappy iPad, it should be pretty quick. Wow. Look at this. So for those of you not in the know, uh, Apex Legends is the big new free game. The uh, Fortnite killer, if you will. Yeah. But not available on the iPad or even on the Mac. No, but it is available on Xbox, PlayStation. PC. And the PC, yeah. So you're playing the PC I'm version. I'm playing the PC version, and um, wow, this is pretty cool. So this, okay, so so now this is a service you s subscribe to monthly. Thirty-five dollars a month. It's a little pricey. Mm -hmm. It's a little pricey. Do you get the games, or do you have to buy the games in addition to the thirty-five bucks a month? You still have to pay for the games, but not Apex Legends because no, because it's, it's free. And honestly. I think because of the success and the huge amounts of money made by Fortnite, I expect a lot of games to start to start being free like this. Yeah, you know? and I I suspect that Apex Legends will come to iOS. So why not start practicing now so yeah. that you're good? Yeah. Um, so this is a really fun game, I have to say. I have to play with the touch screen. Um, okay, I I pick Lifeline because she's the healer. <laughs> um, you would. This yeah, she's going to heal just like me. And so now... Um, Looks like sorry. Bangalore doesn't heal. <laughs> his, and then Wraith. Wraith is... I, I would be Wraith. I like Wraith so, uh, this I like is magic. a multiplayer game. I'm playing with real people. Exploding Mouse 21. They're going to be really uh, upset when you disappear from <laughs> the squad. I think they really are going to be. Um, I could have gone into training mode, but... Um, Oh. Here's my squad. It's much more fun to annoy people. Look, it's all chicks. No, you no, got No, the you middle is two, two ladies and a dude. So the way this works is there are, I think, what, six heroes that you choose from mm -hmm. to become a, your mm -hmm. character, and there'll be more heroes coming along. Just like Fortnite, you f you fly in, but there's no bus. I'm going to launch. <laughs> Get off the bus. Yeah, and then I can pinch and zoom, and now we're launching. Yeah, and a little it's rocket It's very touch-sensitive, so if I 
Uh, yeah, that's a little too touch sensitive. Yes. But I guess what's interesting is how much, how uh, little latency there is. Yeah, and if I had a controller, this would be amazing. Yeah. But we uh, could not locate yeah. our controller. So you should chat with <laughs> Wraith and Bangalore and just tell them. I'm playing on an iPad. I'm sorry. By the way, that's them talking. Oh, it is? Yeah. What are, th what are they saying to me? See, I could hold E to stop following, but again, I can't. Oh, am I going to crash into that? Is that good? You now, landed. Now what do I do? Now go heal them. Now I'm punching They thought things. they had a healer with you, <laughs> with them. They don't have a no. healer. Sorry, dudes. Yeah, and I don't think there are any controls to actually uh, run yeah. around, because uh, it's not a touch game. You need a... <laughs> they, um, they, they really think a three-year-old accidentally got a hold of mom's <laughs> Apex Legends. Mom's Apex Legends. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> sorry, Brad Finn. Yeah. Maybe they're watching. Maybe Brad Finn is watching this right I now. I hope Brad Finn is. And he's like, I'm famous. I don't care that our squad is dying. Yeah, there's no so healer. Is, is there anything I can do here? No. Okay. All right. Should we show uh, how you can really play Apex Legends? What do you mean? On you the can't iPhone? play it on the iPhone. On the, okay, so so believe I don't know me, what you're talking you about. can play it. They have keyboard support for the Mac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd Check need, it out. Yeah, um, you'd need or yeah, you need mouse key. You need some way to control it. Yeah, or a controller. Yeah. Um, but we do have uh, the other way that Anthony plays video games when he should. So that's be Shadow. That's a Shadow. service. Shadow may be available in your area. It's brand new. Just started. And uh, there's a. It's obviously this very interesting. This is gonna. This is gonna be a very interesting way to do it. Now you can. <laughs> You can uh, annoy people again. What is this? What are we looking at? We're looking at a laundromat. Oh, this kid's playing uh, in the laundromat. Don't get excited, kids. I don't think laundromats have good Wi-Fi. Um, and I could you play this on an LTE connection? I wonder. Maybe you yeah, could. You need like they recommend fifteen megabits. Fifteen megabits is what you need. You know, w part of the reason you're seeing an explosion of services like this is the presumption that five G is coming and people will always be online, high speed on every device they have, and uh, everybody wants to jump on that bag wagon. So they want to be in position for that. All right, so okay, now so we're going to show you an, a way to play that's less latent. This is our play, and it's remote play for Shadow. PS4. Shadow.tech, by the way, shadow.tech. It's remote play for PS4, and Anthony has this If setup. you have a, PS, a PlayStation 4, you could do this. Yes. You'll have to both be on the same Wi-Fi network, obviously. That's why you were on the demo <laughs> network earlier. Right. Do you have to be on the same network? Could you do it from your office to your... Theoretically, you could play over the internet. All right. Okay. All right. So Anthony is now going to play for us to show us how it's done. Well, should we show your iPhone too so that we can... Or we well, he's going to have a hard time playing if he's holding his iPhone yeah, out there. Yeah, that's true. Go ahead. Come over and show it. Just, okay. Yeah, you're still While you're landing, yeah. while you're coming in. Look at that. So he has his PS4 controller hooked up to his iPhone. He's clearly very serious about this. He really is. He's he got all the uh, doohickeys. Yeah. Careful okay. of my uh, yeah. No. No, don't knock over the boiling the hot coffee. I mean broth. So you're much Ooyong. better at this Apex Legends. Not uh, much. But better than you are at Fortnite. <laughs> you know, yes. anybody over 15 is not going to be good at this. That's the real problem. I need a gun. That's cool. He needs a gun, so he's looking for a loot box. I need a gun. Somewhere. See, somebody's yeah, already looted that bad. one. Yeah. you got to find one that has not yet uh, been... So that's the that's the first job in any one of these games. It's kind of like the Hunger Games. Yeah. Where, you know, you, you're, you're put into this land of limited space, and the first thing you need is a weapon. There he goes. There's a box. So he's going to go, and he's going to get whatever's in that box. And hope with any luck there's something he can use. There you go. Now he's now he's got a handgun anyway. So our play is uh, eleven ninety nine. Eleven ninety nine a month. No, just eleven ninety nine. This the app is just eleven ninety nine. Just one time. Just and it's, oh, there's lots of stuff. He's looting the heck um, out of this river. Is she on your team? She must be, right? Yeah, these three are. These three are. Okay. He is also. He, you're a healer as well, aren't you, Anthony? Uh, not the same. I oh. don't think so. <laughs> it looks like California. So, just like Fortnite, you're going to have a closing circle that's, that encroaches uh, your space and pushes you all together. And uh, the one big difference is instead of 100 players, it's what, 60? Uh, I think so. We have 18 squads, three right now. So Okay, so that's whatever, 54. Yeah, so, starts with yeah. so it starts with fewer players. Um, and you don't have any building. It's uh, It's just pretty much... And you will have loot boxes because it's EA. <laughs> so there will be ways to waste money in this. All right. 
That's the secret. That's the secret. Can you get outfits like you can in Fortnite? Yeah. Oh. But, uh, and dance moves? Uh, can we do the Carlton? <laughs> there's no dance moves, but uh, there's actually some... There'll be taunts, I'm there's sure. There's some uh, no, talks no. about how expensive the all the... Yeah, EA, you know how EA is going to be. They, they, we don't, you know, they're, they're kind of notorious. This looks really good. So this... What's interesting about this is he's playing this over Wi-Fi to his PlayStation 4, and I don't think there's a lot of latency. The, on a game like this, latency is literally the killer because if you can't see what your opponent is doing in real time, they're very likely to come around a corner and wax you before you can wax them. And uh, it makes it very hard to play a game like this. But this feels pretty... What's, what's the latency like, Anthony? It's pretty good. It, yeah, I mean, it's... You can kind of tell. Feel, sometimes uh, it depends on, you know, the network environment. But sometimes there's lag. Yeah. Use your syringe. <laughs> Too late. <All laughs> Too right. late. So now his healer is going to come and save him, unless his healer is Megan Maroney. <laughs> you can wait a long time for me to come <laughs> heal you. Uh, so our play, it's cost just eleven ninety nine. I think that's so. really cool, but What's you have to have controller? a PlayStation Four. What's the controller you're using, Cole? Well, So to play remotely, you need your own standalone controller like the Nimbus or the Steel Series. Um, but what he's using is his PlayStation 4 controller with a special adapter that holds the uh, iPhone. Actually, it looked like a pretty good way to play it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can, it's, the screen's smaller. And it would work on an iPad too, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you put the iPad on a stand and use the controller. So that's pretty cool. Sony has their own remote play apps. This isn't one of them, but this is the one. So, but it's been around for a while, Anthony says, and they haven't gotten rid of it yet. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Did you want to show off your yeah? Duets? So there's another way. So there's another way to do uh, this. So uh, the 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 Luna display can be used either to take your Macintosh and sit somewhere else, or as a dual screen. Duet is really designed as a dual screen, and du Duet was has has been around. This is probably the longest uh, running one of all the stuff we're going to show you. It's been around for a long, long time. Started by two Apple engineers, and it's it's very similar. Duet can be used, and I've showed you this before. Duet can be used with a wired connection, using a you know in this case a Type C cable connecting the iPad Pro to a Macintosh, or it can be used wireless. Let's see if we can get it running wireless. How, do you feel like how 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 do you feel? You feel like we could do it? First, I'm going to run Duet on my iPad, and then I'm going to run Duet on my Macintosh. And uh, Duet actually sits in the in the uh, a menu and uh, let me show you this so you can you can see us uh, connecting so it sees the leo's ipad pro 12.9 click to connect wirelessly if you if you subscribe you can do a wired version and the wired version of course the reason i think this is different than luna display is with the wired version uh the two have to be next to each other but the latency is way down so it's really very usable um in this case, it's an extended display. Now I have it arranged wrong. So only I, I often I prefer because I'm a lefty. I guess having yeah, I guess it is because I'm a lefty. Having the iPad on the left and the Mac on the right, and with a 12.9 inch, it's great because they're very similar in size to this uh, uh, MacBook Air. Let's close that. So now if I move my mouse, I don't know if you can see that, but if I move my mouse, and this is wireless connection, but it's very snappy. So if I uh, if I launch an app, let me let me. Uh, what's good that isn't on? What about Photoshop? <laughs> there, ooh, you're really pushing it now, huh? <laughs> uh, I'll do I'll do uh, Lightroom. Yeah. Think, oh, do I? I don't have it on here. Um, let me think of something that is okay. Okay, okay, I got something for you. I like the code. What can I say? You like to code. I like to there code. Aren't some there aren't so as many amazing there, iPads. It's hard to code on an iPad. Mm -hmm. um, so this is Visual Studio Code, Microsoft's free coding app. Now watch as I drag it over. Ooh. Ooh. So now I'm using, and actually this is a good, this actually would be a good use for this because um, what I would actually probably do is keep this uh, on the Mac side and then have iTerm, my terminal program, running uh let me move this over to here and uh so this would be this is a very common way to kind of code where you have the output of the code here i'm 
load that in. Oops. Let's see where I am. Well, you get the idea. I don't need it. I don't need to do it. But uh, oh, I moved it. Pfft, silly boy. Um, notice I'm using the iPad keyboard as a Mac keyboard. And I guess you'd have be able to do the same thing, which is uh, attach a mouse to it. The reason that would work, when it doesn't work on the iPad, is because we're running the Duet app on the iPad. So the Duet app is mouse aware, or the uh, the Luna app would be mouse aware, uh, as opposed to uh, the iPad itself, which isn't mouse aware. Now I can GHCI Chapter Three. This is really nice. So this is, yeah, you know what? Actually, a, a good um, a good use of this would be uh, for Lightroom. So, in fact, maybe I should do that because, oh, I don't have it on here. That's right. Um, by doing it in Lightroom, I could, uh, I could have maybe the picture displayed here on this beautiful True Tone display on the iPad and have the controls on this side, that kind of thing. So I think that that's a, this is a, a very good use of, uh, of, of a dual display. And I think there are a lot of people who, programmers, photographers, editors, video editors, same thing. The latency is so low, and this is wireless. It's even better if I connect the USB-C. Uh, Duet display is a little less expensive than Luna display. Frankly, uh, I think it works just as well. And I suppose you could use it the same way by going into the other room. I have never tried it. I've always thought of it as a second display solution. But I suppose you could use it as a remote access within a same network uh, solution as well. So that's that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what else there is to say about this. I think it's uh, I think I like it. It's uh, it's called Duet. Now, oh, I know what I could say. There's the basic app, which is a one-time purchase, and in order to uh, raise more money, they have additional features that you can subscribe to monthly or yearly. Um, but I would try the basic app first, make sure that that's, it's doing what you want it to do. Uh, and then you can, cause it's, cause the, you know, it adds things like the ability to, uh, do it wire, wired and so forth like that. Can you type on the window on the iPad with the Mac keyboard? Um, that's a good question. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. So that's kind of, so I'm typing with the Mac keyboard on this, which is kind of interesting. So, so you, you even can, need a keyboard. You don't even need a keyboard. Yeah, you're right. You could just put this on a stand. In fact, uh, that stand we showed last week mm -hmm. would have been a would be a good choice uh, for something yeah, like this. Yeah, just put it right behind. Yeah, there. and the mouse. So so in order to do that, you just move the mouse over. It really is truly a second display. Mm -hmm. But what I like about it is you can also use the iPad keyboard. And notice on the bottom, the, in order to add additional capabilities, they have arrow keys. They have. Uh, this is a touch. I, oh, that's one. I think that might be one of the things you pay for, extra for. I have the touch bar on this. I don't even have a touch bar on my MacBook Air, but I have a touch bar <laughs> uh, displayed. You could turn that off if you don't if you don't want a touch bar on your iPad. Actually, this is one place where the touch bar kind of makes sense. I just launched Siri. Uh, this is one place where the touch bar kind of makes sense mm -hmm. uh, on a, on the screen at the bottom of the screen. I really like Duet Display. I mean, if you had the choice. Uh, between Swan and Duet, I'm not sure why you choose one or the other. Uh, it, I don't think hardware makes it work any better necessarily. I think for artists, musicians, video editors, this is a really nice uh, solution to give, and especially if you think about it, because you've got this great display on the iPad. Uh, and if you pair this with a, a MacBook Air, for instance, or a, a, you know, a 12 or 13 inch uh, even a 13-inch MacBook Pro, it's a very similar size. So it really is like two displays. It's awesome. I think this is maybe one of the, if you have a Mac and a uh, an iPad, this is one of the best things you can do for it. You are less likely to lose the Duet display. That's like the other thing. There's the no little hardware. red dongle to yeah. misplace as mm -hmm. I did with the Luna display. Mm -hmm. All right, so we showed you... Uh, Several subscriptions, $35 a month-ish, $11.99. What about free? I got a free one. And what's interesting about this free one is it goes the other direction. Oh, I have a free one too. You want to show your free one or should I show my free one? Uh, I just showed one. You do yours and okay. uh, I'll do mine. Uh, Chrome Remote Desktop, which I didn't even know 
existed, yeah. but it's totally free. Um, and I have it set up uh, here on my iPad and I can connect to uh, my PC, either at home or my PC that's on my desk. Um, I just open up remote desktop. With all of these, if you have a firewall on your Mac, you'll have to disable that or enable sharing. You'll have to turn on features. Look at this. Okay, so I- Are you, uh, this is at home? No, no, this is in my office. Um, and I opened up photo booth here. So there's Jason Howell's desk and Karsten. I wish I could just have aimed it a little bit at Karsten who's sitting right there. Um, and I can take pictures. Karsten, wave at us if you're listening. Yes. Come stand uh, come, in front of come stand in the camera. Megan's computer. Um, I can take Anybody pictures. Anybody listening, go stand in front of Megan's computer right now. <laughs> so, yeah, this is my desktop, and I can do all the things. That's a fairly trivial use, but it's kind yes, of an it, interesting idea. I mean, idea. if I wanted to spy on someone, yeah. I could. Um, but, yeah, I can open And this will work over the, the public internet? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I and you're in Chrome on your iPad? Is that what you're doing? I'm using the Chrome remote desktop app. Oh, it's a separate app. Okay. Separate app, and you have to install it on your PC or your Mac as well. Um, and then you can, you know, I can I can open up all any any program that I have on here if I wanted to open up. If I wanted to do some coding like you just did, I could do that um, if I wanted this to. This is kind of nice because the iPad is somewhat limited when it comes to desktop applications. So mm -hmm. the ability to run desktop applications on your iPad is mm -hmm. really handy. Or I could I could just do my I could do my system preferences. I could change them right now. If I can this to. run it can Mac or Windows, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, so yeah, I could uh, turn on parental controls remotely. So and that's totally free. You know, it's yep. Google. It's Google free. You know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the problem. We, um, we really don't. <laughs> but you're right to point out that, yeah, someone could probably easily um, get access. Yeah. Not too easily. But yeah, so that that's free. Yep. I'm going to show you the same thing. There are a number of other com programs that have done this for years. Team Viewer, people know about. Mm -hmm. Log me in. I'm going to show one that is, I'll, I'll be honest, a sponsor on the radio show. That's why I use it, but it works great. They have a free tier. They have a paid tier as well. It's called Remote PC. So I put the Remote PC app on my iPad, and I uh, fire that up. And then I've put Remote PC on a variety of computers. My What's cool is just like your mac in the other room showed up uh my mac at home would show up right and now remote pc has a free for one computer so what i would do is i would try and i think all of them do have free tiers so i would try all of them till you find one mm -hmm. that you really like yeah there's also microsoft remote desktop yeah. works similarly also free uh vnc is that the sort of the same thing? vnc is a open source solution that does mm -hmm. the same thing there's a lot of ways to do this one thing you're going to look for, though, it's really important, is security. You're going to look for one that is, con that is currently being maintained and secured and patches are being applied. For instance, there is a hack with remote desktop we just learned about. Steve was talking about it last week. So you want to make sure, but anything from Microsoft or Google mm -hmm. uh, is always, you know, they're going to be very good about security. You want to pay attention to that. Microsoft remote desktop probably only works with Windows. No, I mean. It works with Mac? Yeah, Oh. Yeah, there is a Microsoft uh, remote desktop app for Mac and uh, Oh, nice. IOS. All right. Wow, that's so, great. Yeah. Yeah, this is a this is a w well-known uh, technology. So there's a, you know, a lot of ways to do this mm -hmm. and a lot of companies that you can choose from. I would it might even be worth looking online before you decide which one to go with to see which ones are mm -hmm. most secure because there you know, there's always going to be bugs and you don't want you're doing this, you're putting it on your computer at work or your computer at home, you are opening up a hole to your systems. You want to make sure that this is well secured. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what I realized doing this also was that I don't have a bunch of, like, high-end software on my Mac. Most of what I need from my Mac is already in the cloud. It's, you know, it's uh, on exactly. Google Photos. It's on iCloud. It's yeah. on um, Dropbox. And so for that, I use the Files app, you know, which is built into iOS. And it, basically the Files app doesn't do anything more except for put everything in one place, you know, so you don't have to have a bunch of different apps. So I can access my Dropbox or my, um, you know, my Google Drive or my iCloud Drive all in one place and I can add tags and stuff. But that, for me, it's like if I am missing something off my computer at home, it's usually in the cloud at this point. So, yeah. I spent a lot of time in the cloud, drifting, in the fluffy, happy little clouds, that's where I am, mm -hmm. meditating. It's time to talk about our sponsor, Calm.com. Are you ready to get calm? I am. 
Did you make New Year resolutions? I think both of us are doing weight loss resolutions. Mm -hmm. And I think meditation helps with weight loss. I, I think a really good resolution is to do things to handle the stress in your life. Because mm -hmm. stress is kind of the cause of so many things, not just overeating and mm -hmm. weight gain, but heart attacks and all sorts of illnesses. Stress makes you sick. So anything that can help you with the stress, help you sleep better, mm -hmm. help you meditate. Calm is not just meditation. I want to say that right up front. Uh, it, it has some wonderful meditations. In fact, they now have the Daily Calm. You want to hear the Daily Calm? I do. Let's play the Daily Calm for today. Today, we'll use the sound of the bell to return us to awareness. We'll use its ring to wake us to the present moment. Start by sitting upright and taking a... So this is a traditional guided meditation. In this, And they always have a different topic. This one is observation and action, which I really like. You can... Now, it's daily, but you can go back to use this anytime. So just heart it, and, it, and it's available if you want to use it again and again. But I... I, this is one thing to really emphasize about Calm. There's there's new content all the time. Uh, not just the new daily meditation. There's sleep stories. And there's some great sleep stories, too. Matthew McConaughey. Uh, meandering down the Oxford Canal with Jerome Flynn. He's great. You know, he's from the Game of Thrones. Um, he's the... Uh, what is, Hello there. My name is Jerome Flynn. He's the mercenary. Well, I can't remember what they call I didn't watch. We'll I only watched season one of Game of Thrones. His name is Braun. Braun, that's it. He's Braun. And uh, you wouldn't think Braun would be relaxing. Take a moment. Taking a few deep. I think he's from. Maybe he's English. Exhaling any tension from the day. So we're now. You can hear the boat in the background going down the Thames. Down the Oxford Canal. I think that's awesome. Uh, I was listening, Lisa and I were listening uh, last night to him with a tour of New Zealand that was really great. That's why I thought he might be New Zealand. There's all These help you sleep. You listen to them, they're stories, and you listen to them and they they just are... If, you, if your mom and dad read you bedtime stories, it's like that. And they have some of the classics. There's Rapunzel. There's a lot of travel. There's Yes, there's Bob Ross and Happy Little Clouds, um, I, Stephen Fry, The Lavender Fields of France. And there's more of these all the time, too. You find a voice in an actor you like and a story, and it will just it's just a wonderful way to fall asleep. They have ASMR. I know that's all the rage with the kids. They do have some Emma Whispers, The Velveteen Rabbit. This book is called... The Velveteen Rabbit. Some people find this really soothing. ASMR, the idea is that the soothing nature of the speech actually puts you into a zone. Um, they have nap, nap time stuff, short little ones. They have nonfiction, which I love because you can learn. I've learned a lot about stuff. Sacred New Zealand, the magic of yurts. You want, you want to really fall asleep? Cricket explained. Mm. Good evening. My name's Henry Blofeld. Hello. And tonight, I'll be reading you a special sleep story. <laughs> One that explains the complex laws and amusingly peculiar terms of what is perhaps the world's most leisurely sport. <laughs> of course... <laughs> you'd wake up in the morning and you'd know how to you'd play cricket. you know how to play cricket. <laughs> I just... I, I, you know what? I've... I just discovered that I find new stuff in Calm all the time. They have meditation... For a variety of things, stress, self-care, inner peace, focus, emotions. If you want a less guided meditation, one that's just timed, for instance, they have that relationships, personal growth. They even have calming music, soundscapes. Let's try a soundscape. You want a little babbling brook in the background? People find different ways to sleep, different ways to relax. What's great about Calm, it's got them all. It's the number one app to help you meditate, sleep, and relax. Apple named it the app of the year in 2017. It was also part of Apple's best of 2018 list. I'm sure it'll be on the list this year, too, because it's just great. And um, I love Calm. Go to calm.com slash iOS today, and you can get 25% off a Calm premium subscription. Uh, I built, long before they became a sponsor, I subscribed to this for a year because it, it just is so great. And having this 
And by the way, it doesn't just run on iOS. It runs on your desktop. There's a browser version of this. It runs everywhere. Um, C-A-L-M. Calm.com slash iOS today for 25% off. So even the price will relax you. Mm -hmm. See, that's better. You like the crickets in the background? I do. Wait, did the is there a dolphin? What's that, a whale? You want a you wanna humpback whale? Mm -hmm. Calm.com slash iOS today. Okay, here we go. Shh. Quiet. No, that's baby shh. I don't know why you would want that. Oh, I do love this. Mm -hmm. This does make me sleep. You know what Lisa likes? Mm. Purring cat. Thank you, Calm, for your support and helping us have a stress-free life. Good news. Yes. Apple, apparently, they've watched the show and they've been listening to us. And they've made oh, it easier goodness. for you to manage your subscriptions. Remember when I used to show you, it would you'd have to go We do a whole here, show. So. It was so complicated. Mm -hmm. We'd and have to so do a show on it. Now, let me show you how to manage all your subscriptions. Okay, I'm going to follow along. Okay, follow along. You just go to the App Store. Oh, App Store. Okay. You, well, yeah, you get, uh, yeah, go to your... That makes sense because that's where I bought it. Right, exactly. Do I tap my head? Tap, tap your face. Tap your face. And then there it is. Oh, manage subscriptions. Yeah, just right Why, there. it's only three clicks away. Yeah, yeah. Do you have anything there you're paying for? I guarantee you, can... you I do. But um, that's kind of the nature of the show. Yeah, so... The job I have to do. There you, yours came up a little faster. Stoop inbox, you paying did, for that, that for a year. Yeah, I you did got that, that from that's week. you. I blame you. Mm -hmm. Carb manager, that that's was it. me. Fiery feeds, that was Greg Farrow. Mm -hmm. Prime phonic, that was me. Life sum, that was you. Mm -hmm. I got life. <laughs> and on and on and on. <laughs> so much easier to check your subscriptions that way. Nice. Is it There's time? duet display by the oh, way. Oh yeah. yeah. How much is that subscription? Uh, back. I don't know. Okay. Uh. It's time to talk about some rumors. There are so many rumors. I've had many. We should. This year. The, the top of the rumor is that, and this comes from John Pachkowski at BuzzFeed, that March 25th there will be an Apple event. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, everything we mentioned subsequently could be announced at that event, but weirdly, Pachkowski says it's just a news event. No announcements. No new iPads. No I can't. I can't think that that's true. But he says it's just going to be about the new Apple news. Oh, and, and maybe the Apple streaming solution. It, uh, yeah, they're going to remember Apple has kind of bought a lot of content, including content from Oprah and others, and they they're going to make a TV channel, I presume, with all of that. Mm -hmm. And so we hope we'll learn. If there is an event, it'll be March 25th, maybe, possibly. That's the rumor. Now, I think it'd be nice if they announced a new yeah. mini iPad mini. Do they, they have a mar they have March events often? Do they and they've announced yes, products? and they that's frequently when they announce yeah. these things. Yes. So anyway, uh, you, you you never know. Mm -hmm. It's all rumors. Apple's not announced any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. The mini, according to rumors, will have a new processor. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, there's also a new iPad with uh, smaller bezels. Mm -hmm. So the new iPad, not a Pro, but will have instead of a 9.7 inch screen, a 10.2 inch screen, mm -hmm. something like that. That would be nice. Also, Ming Chi Kuo said there'll be new MacBooks, MacBook Pros in a strange size, 16 inches. Hmm. <laughs> maybe that's with the be it'll same size but bezel-less. Maybe that's part of the bezel-less thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes, sometime this year we're going to see a Mac Pro. All of that could be announced in March, or or they could do another event, or never, or never. <laughs> or we don't know. And there you have it. Nobody talks to us about nothing. <laughs> nothing. Um. Apple bought a company called Polestring. I thought this was interesting. I am Barbie. I hate math. Um, the, if Polestring was the talking Barbie startup, it used to be called Toy Talk. And now Apple oh. bought them. Oh, I remember them. I yeah. interviewed them many times. Oh. I was a fan. Yeah. Um, I th they were started by some former Pixar employees started yeah. in 2011. Yeah, Dan um, so, what, so what's interesting is they got in trouble because um, I think this is them. Toy Talk got in trouble because parents were worried that it was they were it was recording what their kids were saying because mm -hmm. you could talk to your toy and it would mm -hmm. it would respond back. But of course, it was listening what your kids were saying. That's how it responded back. Yeah. So uh, so maybe they they got out of that business and now they're got Smart. bought by Apple. And the idea is that they'll uh, they'll have the voice technology to compete with the Amazon Echo voice. Yeah, because that's kind of, that was what Toy Talk did is the, the child would speak to it and it would respond. Right. And this was actually predated. At, at, 
2011. Uh, yeah, so I think, and it was, a, I thought, a very good technology. And it's unfortunate they kind of, you know, got, got, got heat. Um, I feel like, did Mattel buy them or just do a deal with them? Uh, I think they just did a deal with them, even though maybe it's a different company. I don't know. Hmm. But, um, well, they, yeah, they must have done a deal with them if they had Barbie. Orrin Jacob, that's who I, uh, that's who yeah. I interviewed, yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, who doesn't want their Barbie to talk back to them? Apparently, everyone doesn't want that. I, I love it on their, on their team, team page, their leadership page, they have pictures of themselves as oh. kids. So now they're called pull string. Either that uh, or kids are running the show. Yeah. These kids are rich. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one last piece of a little bit of news reported by The Verge. Um, Apple has been sending out push notifications to people, um, trying to get them to subscribe to Apple Music. And some people oh, are Oh, please. Out I hope that's not true. Uh, yeah, it that's is annoying. Have you sure. gotten these? I've never. I gotten haven't gotten these. them because I subscribe to Apple Music and so oh, do you. So, so do I. They so. already mm. own us. Um, but the I, I guess in the App Store requirements, it says you can't ever use a push notification to right. sell anything. Except Apple can. Uh, yeah, but I've also seen a lot of other companies sell stuff. I mean, Shutterfly does that from the Shutterfly app. They're always selling stuff. Um, so I think it's a it's a rule that Apple doesn't enforce really across the board. Um, but it, I thought it was interesting. And maybe they'll stop if you if people are making too much noise about it. But yeah, I definitely get push notifications from companies selling stuff besides just Apple. Yeah. yeah. Bob wrote in with a tip. He says, I just got a refurbished I've had mini that I mounted in my study. It would not play nice with the rest of my home kit set up until I deleted and reinstalled the home app. Something to pass on to other iOSers. Well, I thought that was a good tip. So if you're having trouble setting something up on HomeKit, delete the Home app and then reinstall it. That's good advice in general on the iPad. There's not a whole lot you could do to fix problematic apps except uninstall and reinstall. Yeah. I, I turn it off and turn it back on, but I don't think That's a often good one too. to reinstall the app. So I yeah. thought that was a good tip. Yeah. John has a question. I thought this was a good one. Is there an app or a newsletter that can tell me about the new and upcoming apps? Oh, and I did some research. You know, I've talked about a website called Beta List and a newsletter also called Beta List that I subscribe to. They have some really crazy stuff. Um, it's just betalist.com. Um, you'll find, I, I mean, buyer beware with all this stuff because it is brand new. I tweeted about a site I found the other day that was, it was uh, a service, not an app, but a service that would let you email your send your forward your emails to them and they would uh send them back to you at a certain time so it would say like remind me in five minutes um or remind me in two hours but which was an interesting idea right like you can you know have a service uh you know do that sort of getting things done where you just you know clear out your email inbox and it comes back tomorrow so you can deal with it then but uh, this site had no privacy policy and no about <laughs> page so it's just like here forward me all your important emails no. <laughs> so i beta list is something that uh, i i there's always, always product hunt which beta yes. list is basically a copy of Product Hunt, and it's been around for a long time. I'm just going to install it real quickly. You can always use the website. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not just, the difference is it's not just iOS apps. Right. Um, so, oh, it's going to. Beta list isn't just face. iOS apps either. Okay. So Product Hunt, uh, I'll go to the I'll go to the website. It gives you a list of new stuff, and, and it's ranked by votes. So that is one nice way of kind of filtering the wheat from the chaff, mm -hmm. as it were. But there's not a lot of upcoming stuff. I've um, seen the, all of this would be new on Product Hunt. They yeah. pretty much stick with new stuff. I, I, I there used to be a number of uh, websites, podcasts. Mm -hmm. We even had one, uh, i Five for the iPhone, that mm -hmm. highlighted good apps and new it was apps. A good show. It was a good show. Mm -hmm. It was had a um, great host. You did it. Well, Sarah Lane. Sarah started, started it, it and you did it. I finished it. <laughs> you finished it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, it's funny. I think that when, when this all was new, everybody was so excited about apps. There was a lot of interest in well, what's the newest, what's the newest, what's the latest. Mm -hmm. And I think that's dwindled a little bit because people realize you don't want to just kind of download and install every possible yeah. app. I mean, more, I more what I do. And I imagine most people do is, uh, think about what your need is and then look for an app. I'll tell you that probably the best place, though, to see new apps is on Apple's App Store. Mm -hmm, that's um, Daytap. This is, this is the real reason all of this stuff has kind of fallen by the wayside 
is Apple's own editorial. And there was this was a fairly recent in the last couple of years change in the App Store. Uh, Maybe with iOS 11, where they really started to do a lot of editorial stuff. And so a great way to see what's new with, I think, some pretty high-quality editorial around it. Now, remember, Apple does have some interest in promoting successful apps and so forth. But I, uh, this is the first place I would go is the App Store. If you haven't looked at it recently, and I know a lot of people just go there to search for stuff, uh, go to the Today page on the App Store. Uh, and, and they do it by category. So as, as I mentioned, if you're a writer, for instance, and you're looking for writing apps, that's a, a much more common way. So these aren't new apps. People are going by the, by the technologies they want. But the app of the day is usually fairly new. Actually, Pocket's not. But um, they do highlight new apps. So this is a great way to learn about apps. And just because something's new doesn't necessarily mean it's better. I, I think there are so many apps now that they really, uh, this, they really need to do this. Uh, here's, a, here's a list of bicycling apps. <laughs> That's great. So highly recommend this. This, this has become the way. App, you know, Apple, in a way, kind of has co-opted everybody else and put them, you know, <laughs> said, well, we'll do it. They do the same thing with podcasts, and if you can get in the podcast listing on the uh, on the app store, um, that is huge for any podcast. We spend a lot of energy, you know, sending money to Apple and food, <laughs> bottles of booze. <laughs> no, I, I'm kidding. Just your but we do cubes. we do love James and his team <laughs> very much. <laughs> uh, Jim had a question. He says, "I'm trying to find a good substitute for Facebook Messenger. Apple's message app works. Apple product to Apple product, right? Yes. I need a messaging app that can send a message using my Apple Contacts app data to send messages and invite the recipient to get the app instead of using Facebook Messenger." So I suggested to Jim Signal, which is one that we've talked about before. He just wants to replace Facebook Messenger. With he something. wants to do, but it, it has to be cross-platform. It can't yes. just be, oh, there's, I mean. He wants to use phone numbers. There's so, ki kind of an infinite number of these. phone. If you know the person's phone number, and I guess if it's in your Apple contacts, you do. Mm -hmm. Signal's great because it's completely secure. Uh, but I sent that to him, and he said he most of his messaging is done on the iPad. And as you can see on your iPad signal right now, um, is sideways. It's yeah. It's an iPhone app. So he said he's been trying Viber. What do you think about Viber's Viber? Viber's great. That's uh, very popular in Europe. Viber is focuses more on phone calls and mm -hmm. uh, less on text messaging, but it'll do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, Skype and anything that does phone calls will also do text messaging. It all kind of kind of goes together. So yeah, Viber is a great choice. Very popular in Europe. And it's great for making free calls. I also like Telegram. Mm. And one of the neat things about Telegram is there's an API, which means that uh, there are third-party apps for Telegram. And yes, there are lots of ways to use Telegram um, on an iPad. Hold, hold, hold the phone for a second <laughs> while I enter my phone number. But it does look like it is an iPad app, which is nice. Yes, it's native. And as soon as I get the code, I will uh, set it up. Because I have, I use it, I just never used it on this iPad, but I've used it for years. In fact, I've been, I've been a strong advocate for Telegram. Let me tell you a couple of things, though, you might want to know before you uh, start using it. If encryption is the most important thing for you, Telegram promises encryption privacy but they use a proprietary uh, technology. There we go. Uh, they use a proprietary technology uh, to do it. So um, it may or may not be super secure. But Telegram has some amazing group features. You can have Telegram bots. I have a Telegram bot that automatically does stuff. Um, uh, there, are, I subscribe to the Apple PR bot, which is a great bot. Whenever Apple puts out a press release... It's automatically sent to my Telegram, and you can see Telegram. Allison Sheridan, who's wonderful, uh, yeah, we talk to her all the time in Ozilla. She uh, she loves uh, Telegram. She always communicates with me. And by the way, the best stickers. Look at these stickers. <laughs> wonderful stickers. And if you see a sticker like this is a Game of Thrones sticker. If you like a sticker, you press View Sticker Set. <laughs> and, and you can see the sticker set, and if you like it, you can add it. So the stickers wise, it's just phenomenal, just phenomenal. Yeah, don't show any of the other stuff. 
Uh, she, I gave her, I sent her little finger and she said, is that a polite way of giving me the finger? No. <laughs> Just a little finger. Isn't what does he have cute? in his hand? Some beer? Uh, no, no, that's little finger. Oh. That's uh, shame, shame. That's Cersei. Oh. Cersei oh. Lannister. Oh, she. She. Sorry. Like There's lots that. of them. This is a... This is really great way to send. I this is my favorite messaging app. Uh, unfortunately, um, well, okay, a number of caveats it was created by a guy who was at the time thought to be the Mark Zuckerberg of Russia. There's two in in the old days saying that was a good thing. Mm -hmm. If you call somebody the Mark Zuckerberg of Russia today. It's like the worst insult you can give anybody. What's worse than Mark Zuckerberg? Mark, Mark Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg of Russia. Of Russia. <laughs> but in his defense, Putin, Telegram was doing so well, said he actually started a Facebook clone in Russia as well. And Putin said, oh, we're going to buy that. That's ours now. And took it from him, in effect, for a pittance. So he left Russia. He ran away. I can't remember his name. He ran away from Russia and lives in Europe now. And I think his position is he's anti-Russian, mm. right? Because Putin screwed me. Um, and But I don't know if you'd trust that. Uh, it's up to you whether you believe it or not. I uh, Honestly, I feel like it's... He, yeah, there he is. There's Mark Zuckerberg in Russia. Uh, I, I feel like um, it's... Here's the thing. It's secure enough. Mm. If you are trying to do really secure messaging signal... That's truly secure messaging. Uh, and it's the one I would recommend. It's one every security expert recommends. It's one Edward Snowden recommends. But for most of us, it's, it's the security of our messaging is not paramount. What we really want is something that's fun to use, that is expressive, that lets us do a lot of great things. And Telegram is amazing. It's completely free. There's an iPad native app. There's an app for every platform. There are many apps because it has a public API. So many people have written apps for Telegram. Uh, they're creating, I, I think, I think that honestly they're, they're on the side of the angels, but you can't, you never know. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, but, uh, I'm using telegram X, which, uh, is kind of a quasi official version of telegram. Um, I've been a big, if I could get everybody in the world to use telegram, I would. Yeah. I think that's, that's his idea is just to get off Facebook messenger, um, with all of convince all of his it has all, I, honestly, all the features I think any messaging app should have. If Google would buy this and and just put it out as, as their messaging app, uh, it would be awesome. But it's not Google, and in a way, that's great. You can have groups of up to 200,000 members. Mm. Um, it is, uh, there, it go, I could go on and on. The only thing is when they say encrypt, they're using a roll-your-own encryption system that nobody really is sure works. Mm. But... Again, who cares, right? You're not, you don't care what people, if people could somehow learn your secrets. All right. So uh, my app cap is going to make us very unproductive for, for a long time. So let's talk about Atlassian and how we can be more productive in the workplace. With and Atlassian. then you're going to show us how we can be less productive. Yes, is exactly. That how it, yes. Is that, is, that what, is that what you're saying yeah, here? Atlassian is really about productivity. And it is an amazing company. We're, uh, and proudly so, an Atlassian house. That's how I often describe our company. Atlassian is a collaboration software company that empowers IT teams around the world. This is really important because your IT is the backbone of everything you do. And you, it's important uh, because we're in such a competitive environment that IT teams plan and execute agilely. And when you use the word agile... You, you got to think of Atlassian's Jira, right? The Agile app. It starts with Jira. We use Jira to track problems, who's working on projects, who's working on solutions, and when they're done, what stage they're at. It's fantastic for that. We also use Confluence, an Atlassian product, that lets us document the changes we make, document our workflow. Documentation is important because your IT team doesn't work in a vacuum you has got to also communicate with the rest of the organization, and that's where Confluence is fantastic. And when somebody new comes in, they can get into Confluence and immediately see what's going on, understand how to do things, look up processes, and so forth. But this is what the nice thing about Atlassian is. You can find the tool that's right for you and know that it'll grow with you as your needs grow. And it's, it's not – I think sometimes people think Atlassian 
is just for developers because Jira started as an agile development tool. You know, they have Bitbucket, which is a code repository and things like that. But no, Atlassian has an affordable, reliable set of tools for teams of all kinds, from DevOps to Agile, from IT apps to ops to ITSM and whatever is next for you. Some of the best IT teams use Atlassian, like Yale, Hallmark, well, well, Walmart. Walmart and Hallmark. And Hallmark. The together. It's everybody, including Twit. A Confluence and Jira are going to form the backbone of effective cross-team project planning, organization, and communication. But there's also Ops, right? you got Ops Genie and Status Page. That'll help you better detect incidents, coordinate response efforts, resolve issues faster. And as with every Atlassian product, it helps you keep your customers or your stakeholders up to date. Choose the team that's right for your current framework and trusting that as you grow, it can grow with you. And it all integrates seamlessly so you don't have to bounce around from platform to platform. As with all of Atlassian's products, the tools for your IT team are easy and free to try. Just head to Atlassian.com slash IT to find out which Atlassian offering is right for your team. Atlassian.com slash I T again with the hunting hats. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> why, but we did have no. We it had, was cold. That's we why had, we had animals last week, and they were. Weren't you cold this morning? Uh, it was like fifty degrees. It was cold. I had to do. Freezing. I did that thing that Californians do. What's that? Uh, where you turn on the heat? No, your windshield's icy, so you spray water on it. Yeah, you can only then, do that in California. It's yeah. a big mistake but to it, do that where it's actually cold. Freeze a little bit, but then I just kept spraying water on it. But yeah, I'm. That's I, pretty cold for California. It is. It was. Yeah, it was cold. Don't. Just as a word of warning, put mm -hmm. boiling water on there. Because it, it could it. crack your yeah. windshield. Yeah. I have seen people put hot water in a Ziploc bag and roll it on their oh, windows. That works pretty well. That is. That's an interesting Here's a idea. Here's a novel thought. Huh. Life hack. Okay. So um, I have become addicted to a game. You know, I showed you the Apex Legends. I'm really That's worried all... about this because I get addicted to games very easily. As you I know. don't know if this is your kind of game. Did you like Flappy Bird? It's too frustrating. Is this like that? Yeah. Did you like Crossy Road? Too frustrating. Is this like that? Yeah, kind of. It's called Steppy Pants. <laughs> and <laughs> Is this where you try to put your pants on two legs at a time? No. <laughs> Although that's a good game. Have you ever played that game? Uh, no. Oh, I've never won it. Oh, what's he doing? You have to step and not step on a crack. So you have to step. Oh, I hate, oh, this. Oh, I hate it already. <laughs> I hate it with a passion. And okay. I've only taken three steps. I have to hold a bit a little bit longer to take a bigger. Ooh. Oh, God, I hate this game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to get it this time. <laughs> if she weren't such a noodle brain. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, that was my new best. My new best. <laughs> That's your new best? <laughs> yes. How uh, long have you playing this? Um, it's too long for that to be my new best. So I can do Steppy Streets, Floors Lava. Oh, Floors Lava. Walk, Kids love that further. game. Um, oh, you yeah, I see. You play this more often. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, checkpoint Challenge. That. Let's go back to... It's a race. Should we... It's yeah. a race to the finish line. Yeah. Can I play against you? Um, well, you can just cheer me on. It is kind of funny because she's so inept. Oh. <laughs> she's so terrible. Oh. <laughs> This is what the AIs look like until they get really smart. Oh. Is that yeah. Tyrannosaurus rooting you on? <laughs> oh, oh you just do dude. <laughs> okay. Um, this is really all it is. You can become different characters. Is this how you learn to be a zombie? Kind of. You can get a zombie leg, um, and then you live longer. <laughs> okay. I admit, this is pretty cute. It like, seems like one of those games will have you hurling your iPad across the room in no time. Yes. Uh-oh. <laughs> I love that. Oh. Oh, I'm going to get a coin. So where is where you tap important? I mean, like, how no. does it know which leg to move? Uh, left, right, left, right. Okay. And how, no, how long you tap. Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> okay, it's, it's, <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, okay, yeah. So um, I can turn the music off and on. Uh, Steppy Streets is where it starts. Um, 
steppy streets. And you can, you know, they're in-app purchases, so if you want uh, tips or something. Oh. <laughs> I'm very bad at it. But, like, it's that idea that I'm going to get better that keeps Ooh, me I love playing. it. I love it. Ow. Ow. Now, can I be a boy? Yeah, you can. Oh, wait. Here's here's how you can be a boy. You can. Um, oh, you choose. Oh, no. Cha you can change to be d a different type. Oh, of, you can be a zombie, but, a money yeah, bags. And, or you can be a. But a you have to get it from the prize machine. So this has many of the same mechanics as. A yeah, like if I race. wanted a zombie body, I would have to pay All right, 99 I'm gonna get cents. It. Um, pay 99 cents. It's just step funny. Legs. It is. Oh, undies. You could just have be walking around in your underwear, but you need 99 cents. Are there in app? Oh, there are. Yeah, in yeah, it's yeah. 99 cents for underpants or bunny legs. You mean you're not wearing underpants? <laughs> no, that just seems... underpants. Just underpants. <laughs> it, it's weird because it costs 99 cents for you to, <laughs> to take off to your take pants. off your pants. Yeah, that's. Did, do some things better? Like if you had the Stepatron, would that be better? Probably, yeah. I don't know. I haven't paid. I, I don't pay for stuff. No, because, never no. pay for stuff. It, it, I, I kind of take it as a point of pride. Mm-hmm. But you could win this as you as you play it. Yeah, yeah, you could. So steppy pants. I kind of like this. I I'm, I think I, I could see why you got addicted. Yeah, because I just want to get better. It's from s tap anywhere to step. Ooh. Okay, well that was easy. Three. Okay, here we'll show his because the beginning I'm getting is good. This, I'm getting the start. Yeah. Cause I just that's what that's how I fell in love. You had yeah, me in that I thought little wiggle if walk. If I could do that. <laughs> yeah, you don't have any cracks there. That's the. <laughs> yeah. Hold for a bigger step, but not too much. See, I did too much. Yeah. It makes me just want to start walking around. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like this. Yeah, this is the game right here. If this was just the game, I don't want challenges. <laughs> There's oh. the crack. Watch out for the crack. How do I get the other leg to oh, go that's somewhere? A good question. I don't know. Hold it longer. Oh. Yeah, you. It's left, right, left, right. But if you hold it longer. <laughs> Isn't he adorable? <laughs> so I get it. You could actually walk normally if you got the timing right. Yeah. Watch the crack. Oh. Not too long. <laughs> <laughs> See, it is a little bit like it has that gambling thing. Like if I just keep doing it, I'm going to get yeah, it like right I'll eventually. Get it. Yeah. I'll eventually get it right. So, I mean, this is going to be the Fortnite killer. Forget Apex Legends. <laughs> All the kids will be playing this someday soon. It is kind of fun. Oh, use two fingers. That's... Two fingers? What does that do? Nothing. I mean, you could just get fast walking. All right, should we uh, move on to yours? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly what gets you is, I swear I could do better. Yes, exactly. I know I could do better. That's where the addiction comes oh, in. Oh, you got me. Mm -hmm. Steppy pants. I love Steppy it. Steppy pants. Free with in-app purchases. Mm -hmm. Mine's free, free. Brendan Ike uh, used to work at Firefox at the Mozilla mm. Group, and he, was, uh, he created Firefox, one of the people, one of the primary leaders of the team went off to start a new company called Brave. And they make a browser that is based on Chromium, which is the open source version of Google's Chrome. So it does anything Chrome does, except spy on you, show ads, track you, all the stuff you don't want Chrome to do oh. is in Brave. And I've talked about this before in other shows. Uh, I, I feel like Brave has come a long way at this point, I'm ready to use Brave on every platform, including iOS. Now, remember, when you use an alternate browser on iOS, it never can be the default. So when you click on links, it'll always open Safari. But I noticed, I was thinking, you know, a lot of most of the time I use browsers on iOS, it's because I launch the browser and do a search. Mm -hmm. So why not make Brave be that browser? Right. Brave has a lot of nice features. Because it is uh, Chrome, it looks like Chrome. It's got all the same chrome features um 
there's the tabs and it's and this it's got a mobile version and it's actually really nicely tailored for whatever platform so they have an excellent um version for ios an excellent version let's just let's open something i don't know what twitter no i'm not a subscriber let's open let's go to wikipedia that's a good one always good to go to wikipedia um so it's fast it can uh, i'll show you the settings it'll it can use uh all the regular um search engines and, you know it defaults to chrome but it, it can use a whole bunch of other ones including besides DuckDuckGo stuff that safari doesn't offer info galactic quant start page wikipedia can be there's private tab searching is different than standard tab I've turned off show search suggestions. That's one of the ways Google spies on you, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's also one of the ways Google pushes you. More importantly, in a direction, you know. And I'm just turn those off because I don't I don't want that. Um, there are also quick search engines that you can use any of these by using a special search term. Uh, it has a, a, a a lot of privacy features. It will use Face ID if you wish or a passcode. Here's built-in ad blocking, ad tracking blocked. HTTPS, so every everything is secure if possible. This is a plug-in that most many people install on Chrome, but it, it comes built into Brave. Block phishing and malware. If you really want to get crazy, you can block scripts and even fingerprint protection. It will block suspicious scripts automatically. So if there's a JavaScript loading from another site that's the site that you're on, it'll let you know which is really nice. It also has a sync capability, which I really like. So this is in beta right now, but you can sync the bookmarks on your desktop to another desktop, to all your desktops, to all your mobile devices, so that the bookmarks automatically get synced. That's a very, I think, a very nice feature. And Brave is starting something kind of uh, new, which is, I, by the way, every time you go to a site, you can open this up. And for people who used Ghostery or something like that, this is really nice. It'll show you. Let's go to a site that probably has a few more ad. Uh, let's go to TheVerge.com. Now, first of all, I'm going to see an ad, mostly ad-free version of The Verge because huh. it's doing ad blocking. But if I type the lion, the brave lion, 18 ads and trackers, it had to upgrade it to HTTPS. Didn't block any scripts, although if I turn on script blocking, I bet it would. So this is where I can do the settings. You can also take down the shields on a site very easily just by typing tapping the lion's head and turning off shields. That means there won't be any blocking. And there are some sites where I want pop-ups. I want you know various features to show up. So I will turn off the shields on those sites, or you can do it individually. This is all built in, which I really like. It has all of the standard Apple sharing capabilities. Really, there's nothing Safari can do uh, that Brave can't do. So... Uh, Brave was a little immature in its early days. There's a new thing that they're doing, which is Brave. I can't remember what it's called, like Brave Bucks or something, where um, they actually, you can generate revenue or put money into a wallet and use it to distribute among the sites that you are blocking ads on to help them monetize. Oh. And I think that's really great. Yeah, um, it's gonna it's a, I think it's a crypto coin. Let me see if it's. I can see the name of it on my. Uh, well, I know when you open up the the Brave browser, Coin Market Cap comes up as a tab. That's a choice. Yeah, like but, do you think they sold that? Space? Um, Do they sell that they, area? Maybe I don't know. I think you haven't used it enough to yet have your own bookmarks right. in there. Probably. Um, you could put payments in there, payment methods. You could put addresses in it. It's basically a very complete Chrome. Um, I have Tor on the desktop version, I'm, and then the sync, and this is on the desktop, but this is how the sync works. I can sync up, uh, I can add, shall I add a new device? I don't know if I want to show this. I guess I could show this. Add new device. S well, if I do this, it'll show a QR code. I'll take a picture of the QR code on the iPad, and then we'll be syncing the iPad bookmarks mm -hmm. and all my other desktop bookmarks, which is which is really nice. Um what else uh, do I want to tell you about? It's it's. I think it's just a really nice browser, well worth um, uh, taking a look at anyway as an alternative, especially if you like Chrome, because it is Chrome. It's going to do everything Chrome can do. I have Chrome extensions installed, uh, but I but I also get privacy, which Chrome is not no, known for. So I make it my default everywhere. Um, I I have started to put money into the the wallet there so that. Uh, I can pay sites if I want. There's lots of information. They call them bats. 
which probably stands for brave something. Hmm. And uh, so I have some brave tokens. You can put money in if you want, and then you can grant it to some of the sites that you visit if you want. So that's that's kind of cool. This is my bat wallet. I'm not sure how much of this is on the iOS side. I bet you Apple does not allow this. Mm. Um, probably. So, you know, there may be some limitations that you see on the Brave browser on the uh, on the Apple side. But I think this is really well worth looking at as an, as an alternative to Safari, as an alternative to Chrome. Frankly, it's it's now my browser of choice everywhere. Thank you, everybody. That's our app, Caps. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's our show. That's our show. We did it. Our heads are warm, our hearts are full, and mm -hmm. our stomachs are empty. Mm. Time to leave. <laughs> Uh, Megan at twit.tv for your questions, your videos, anything. Uh, if you want to leave us a voice memo, just, you know, record a voice memo and email it to me. Yeah, we or like record video, put it on YouTube privately and send us the link. That mm -hmm. works too. If you're going to send us a video question, we love those, as we mentioned before, but make it short, 30 seconds or less. Don't go on and on, or we'll have to either edit it or dump it. And start with your first name and city. That way, not last name, just first name and city. That way we can identify you without identifying you, if you know what I mean. We do this show every uh, Tuesday Around about 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. That would be uh, 1700 UTC. If you want to tune in and watch live, you can at twit.tv slash live. There's audio and video there. You can, If you're going to do that, if you participate live, you should also be in the chat room live, irc.twit.tv. And uh, if you want to listen to previous shows or listen on demand, you can do that as well. The website is twit.tv slash iOS for this show. And, uh, of course, if you look in your favorite podcast application, I'm sure you'll see a way to subscribe to iOS today. That way you'll get it as soon as it's available when, uh, every Tuesday after we finished, after Kevin finishes taking out all the naughty bits. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you next time on... iOS Should I? Should I? <laughs> <laughs>